All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM here in lovely San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined from Washington State uh, by Neil Enix, who is one of the co-founders of the Fanet Company. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, thanks for having me on, John. Absolutely. And you uh, you and your brother, I think, is uh, founded the company and built it up from scratch. Uh, so we're going to talk today about leadership and entrepreneurship. So you have been in the trenches and lived the whole experience of building a company up from scratch. So um, let's say, what, what has that taught you about the nature of both leadership and entrepreneurship? And also, what kind of leadership do you need to display or, or leverage in an entrepreneurial um, environment? Well, uh, you know, that's a, that's a great question. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's funny. There's another business owner, a friend of mine, we were, we were talking and uh, one of the things that he, we were just talking about was if you want to learn more about yourself and grow in leadership and, and so on, you know, get married if if you want to grow more have kids and then if you want to grow even more you should start a business and have employees mm -hmm. and so i i would say there's just so much that have been fortunate to learn over the years and obviously you know we're thankful for the experiences that we we come across and 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 the different people that that we we meet along the way and i i would say if i was going to really encapsulate you know what we've what we've learned over the years is um you it's it's a process of rising to the challenge mm -hmm. and you know we'll run into run into people my my brother and i are firm believers that you know if um if we can start a business anyone anyone can do it but there's this there's this process of rising to the challenge of uh, of of leadership of being able to move past yourself mm. and and see the see the objective see the goal beyond um just the um focus on ourselves that that can be that can be prevalent and so it's it's really this this journey of learning to look at um, how to do things objectively and and remove yourself from the equation and and instead focus on that on that goal and on that vision and and so it, it's quite a process of of doing that. But. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting uh, just to pick up on that idea of moving past yourself because, you know, just explain that a little more for for our viewers and listeners because I think that's a great concept and a great way of putting it is moving past yourself because you can easily paralyze yourself when you're in a situation like this, right? When you're starting out and doing something, there's so many different things going on. Um, things never happen as fast as you would like them to, right? Uh, it okay. always takes longer. Uh, it's a little bit more um, traumatic than you would like. So how do you, how do you get to that point where you can actually move past yourself? You know, both my brother and I over the years, um, we have, we we look to wisdom, right? And uh, both my brother and I are are Christians, and so we we look to wisdom there in Scripture. And there's and there's wisdom in other people. There's wisdom in evaluating your own self and your motives. And then there's also the wisdom of being able to connect with with other people and have the wisdom of four eyes instead of just your own two eyes on a, on a situation. And so in, in our circumstance, you know, my, we're fortunate because my brother and I started the business. And so there's obviously a lot of, on top of growing the business, there's, there's a lot of inner working of us being able to communicate with one another on, you know, Hey, this is, this is what we want to look uh, look to, or, Hey, here's some things that we need to refine. And, and there's a, there's a certain stance of, 
of an openness that you want to take with that, right? We, mm-hmm. we are firm believers in that the only way forward is by being honest with yourself. And, and that's hard. But, you know, if someone is struggling with looking at starting a business and they're feeling, hey, this is daunting. Well, you know what? If you just start by being honest with yourself you and commit to that, you are going to go a long way. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's simplified. But as far as personal development, you have to be rooted in that. And so those make for some hard conversations. Those makes for some times, as I'm sure you're familiar with, where uh, some days you you just in self-reflection, you're like, you know what, I, I'm going to fire myself right now. <laughs> I hire myself tomorrow. And it's, it's going to be better. It's going to be a new day. But and, sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. And I think just also just to pick up on something that you said there, because I think it's incredibly important is the idea of motivation and what motivates you. Because I was having this conversation with another guest recently. Yeah. And I do think it's like whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're simply, you know, somebody, an employee in a job or whatever, I don't think enough people actually really take a moment to ask themselves, what is motivating me to do what I'm doing? Why am I really doing it? Uh, And, you know, if you're starting a business, maybe, well, I want to own my own business, but really what is, you have to go down a couple of levels to, because as you say, otherwise you'll never be able to make it through those tough times unless you really know what's driving you in the first place. Yes. Yeah. That's, I'm so glad that you brought that up because boy, it's just so true. You know, when, when we get up in the morning and we think about the things that we have to do in life and doing things that we may not enjoy, mm-hmm. but it, we are able to successfully do the things that we may not enjoy because that future, the joy of that vision that we have, the goals that we have, the things that are truly driving the current of our, of our strength towards those goals, those those help us to can do those things day in and day out. And, mm-hmm. and that's what we need. And I think that's just one of the things that we, it's important to get back to. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because if you are struggling and really struggling, particularly with doing the things that you say that you don't like, it's probably a good time to analyze your motivation because at the end of the day, maybe, maybe you're, wanting to start and have your own business or or the job that you're in, maybe it actually isn't your dream. Maybe it's somebody else's. Maybe it's something that you feel you should do, other people have done. Because if you're struggling really, really hard with the tough stuff and the stuff you don't like doing, um, unless you're truly motivated, you won't get through that bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, I think it's telling that when you look at some of the people that we think of as really successful, you know, here in our, um, here in Washington, you know, we've got Bill Gates and mm-hmm. things like that. They, they have recognized that there's a vision that has to be out past. We're going to make a lot of money mm-hmm. in order to really be truly fulfilled in, in life. You've got to tie it to things that are meaningful and, and certainly, as we think about people like Bill Gates, you know, they are they are doing that and trying to lift everybody up around them. We see that in other cultures and things like that. And um, those those things are noble. And that's I, I think that's that's the place where where we need to be. So what were some of the what were some of the things that surprised you when you set out on this journey? Um, you know, what were some of the things that surprised you and and maybe even what are some of the things that you had to do from a leadership point of view that surprised you? Um, one of the first things that comes to mind is um, huh, how, how difficult it is <laughs> to do it really well. <laughs> mm-hmm. And. Um, you know, there's, there's something to be said where, you know, we'll chuckle about, and I love, I love this, you know, I love the young budding entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. I I love it. You get that, you get that fire, you get that, um, that energy in there and they're, they're, they're just going to do it. And I love it. 
And, you know, and, and my brother and I, you know, we had, we had that, um, and, and continue to, you know, continue to have that, but, but starting a business and doing it really well is going to be a lot harder than if you're, if you're new to it, than than what you would have first thought. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's one of the things. And so that kind of goes back to um, just that importance of, of having your vision set, having your purpose set, because it, it will be hard. And there are times when it will be harder, but it's rewarding if, you're lined up on accomplishing things that are meaningful and mm -hmm. in life, um, you know, whether that's your family or the community or, um, you know, there's just a whole number of things that are, that are meaningful, uh, mm -hmm. or that can be meaningful in that way. Um, so yeah, that, that would be, that would be one thing. Let's see. You, and your other question was, yeah, from a leadership point of view, what were some of the things that surprised you? I mean, you know, as obviously as you brought people into the organization and as you expanded, what were some of the leadership challenges that surprised you? Um, <clears throat> one of the things that surprised us, well, I guess there, there'd be a couple things, but probably one of the biggest ones is we stopped well okay first first i'll go over this we discovered that we were not really clear in communicating who we were as a company mm -hmm. to our employees and and that was that was funny because you know in my mind and in keith's minds we've got the whole storyline of our company, how things have evolved, things like that. And what we came to the realization of was if we want to really effectively communicate a purpose, a, a meaning not, that's not just our individual meaning, but the, the purpose of the company, mm -hmm. which, you know, one of our, one of our slogans is we're entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs right you know our our vision was coming alongside um because of our past and the things that we grew up with we wanted to come alongside other entrepreneurs and help them in their journey of building businesses which can help build families which can help mm -hmm. build communities and and so we discovered um some years in that as we were having these conversations with our team we were not really effectively communicating that meaning to our team so that they understood the whys and were able to were able to grab that why as their own you know there's there's a purpose that's beyond just who i am there's a purpose beyond beyond just who my brother is or a purpose beyond even who they are and mm. and so there's that that was one of the things. So effectively communicating the um, the real meaning behind what we do, why we do it, and um, obviously we want to make money, and provide for everyone who's a part of the company, and um, and so you have that individual vision, and then but you've also got that business vision, what we're accomplishing as an organism. Um, the other thing that we learned in uh, in leadership is with, with this whole process was we made a shift a couple years in from no longer focusing on skill sets or prior training mm. that our employees had. And we started interviewing for um, quality of the person. Right. And, and so we've really come to a point where if a person has a desire to work and, and there's an, an ability to, mm -hmm. to understand what we do and there's integrity, we made a switch to hire based on character versus hiring based on capability on paper. Yeah. And that was that was such a great thing because 
we started to see a shift in the culture of our company Mm -hmm. as as we had these great team players with high integrity now starting to have more of these types of players with with high integrity um, also coming on board and that just that makes for an exciting atmosphere yeah, uh, and it makes for, it makes for the ability to build a deliberate culture, right? As opposed yeah. to it or, organically, uh, it organically develop over time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I think that's an interesting that's an interesting approach uh, because, I mean, mostly people would do it the opposite way around, right? You know, recruit for the skill and hope that the person who comes with it is the is is nice too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it did make it so uh, we had to really get our standard operating procedures in line sure. as far as training. <laughs> mm-hmm. But boy, it's it's worth it. It's worth mm-hmm. it to know that any of those guys in one of the other rooms, I I am just confident in their and who they are as a person, confident in how they encourage the rest of the team members, confident in them being a part of this vision of entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs and that's that, that's awesome so. yeah no, that's that's fantastic well neil we're um, up against the end of our time uh, yeah. but before we go all of neil's information and the information about Fanet will be in the in neil's contributor bio along with this uh, but before we go neil uh, tell people a little bit more about yourself and your organization Sure. Uh, yeah, my, my name is Neil Enix. We're, our company is Fanet. We are an internet marketing agency based here out of Washington, right, right close to Seattle here. And um, we specialize in helping businesses uh, grow scalable marketing engines. And so understanding uh, revenue goals, things like that, and coming alongside and building a sustainable model that grows along with them. So absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, this has been really interesting. And especially I think anybody who is starting their business or is in the early stage of business will find those insights uh, very telling. So, you know, make sure you understand your vision, make sure you communicate. I love what you said about the communication because it's true. Uh, And this is true of most things. Sometimes we think just because we innately know something or have been talking about it for so long, we think that we're good at explaining it to other people, but that's not always the case. Yeah. And then, and then making sure if you're going to, if you, if you want to have a particular culture, then recruit to the culture as opposed to recruit to the task and hope that the culture comes with it. So yeah. great points. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Neil. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you for another expert insight very soon. And thanks again, Neil. That was great. Thanks, John.